morning hello i'm so excited that you're here for the vlog i am going to be doing my makeup while i talk with you yes i know i'm an early riser i know it's weird but it just helps me i like waking up in the morning i like having <laughs> you guys watch tiktok where it's like waking up in the morning thinking about so many things thanks <laughs> That just made me think about that. Oh my gosh, what is happening today? I don't even know. Anywho, I am excited for today. I've just kind of been in this like mode of just trying to like survive. I think it's hard because like up here in the Northeast, we go until like the middle of June, sometimes even the end of June. But like a lot of people on Instagram are like either done with school or they're about to be done with school. I don't know. I'm so jealous. <laughs> but I know that it's also beneficial when it comes into the summer and I have a little bit more time before I go back to school. So I get it. But I'm still just sad. Okay. I'm, I'm just a little sad. But anywho, today's gonna be good. Um, I'm excited to show you all the things that we're doing today and you know some of the learning that we've been up to. Um, I don't know. I'm just really proud of them. I really like my class this year. I like the staff that I'm with this year. I feel like it's like a really good mix of people and kids. I mean there's always problems. Like I never want to make my classroom seem like it's perfect or we have no issues like that is such a lie and I never want to like come across like that we all have our problems and my classroom for sure has its moments and like there are days like the other day I was trying to finish my like testing portfolios which if you've been here on the vlog you know that I've been struggling with those because I had so many to do and Massachusetts just has a weird way of like doing everything and so um I was just struggling with that but I was literally sitting at my table <laughs> I was sitting at my table just like trying to get them done and um <laughs> at the end of the day I realized like I barely had talked to kids like my parents just ran the room for me and I felt like such a bad teacher but like I also needed to get those things done my para came up to <laughs> my para came up to me and was like we just want you to know that like the whole time you were sitting at your desk you were just like talking to yourself like <laughs> so I must have been so stressed like writing these portfolio like descriptions that I was just like mumbling like probably just angry like upset but I was just mumbling to myself oh it was such a mess so you know what we're thriving but I feel so so much better now I'm still looking for curriculum for next year. Have no updates on that. There's a possibility, hopefully today I get an answer. There's a possibility that I could get new class furniture. And I'm very excited about it. So I'll keep you updated on whether I'm able to get that or not. So I just arrived to school. I'm just kind of hanging out in the parking lot for a second. I have been really struggling with my allergies and I don't even know why. I barely had any issues this fall or in the spring, but now that it's getting hot, basically like summer, it's really bad. And so I'm hoping to like get through the day, but I was not expecting or prepared for this level of stuff so I mean, my eyes are swollen it's harder for me to breathe the usual but I am here and I ordered myself a coffee and I'm ready to go <laughs> there's a lot that we're doing today and I want to break it down for you and show you all of the pieces I usually do this in my weekly vlogs but we have less time today so here we go for literacy there are a few things we're doing. We are in the process of talking about zoo animals, farm animals, and all of the things in between, and just kind of like springtime in general. It also links with what the speech and the ESL and all of the other providers are working on right now for their themes. And so we are talking about the life cycle of a chicken. So we have a lot of digital stuff. They will do boom cards on their iPads and they will 
read books like this together um, and then like I said it perfectly ties in with the services that they have later in the day so it's great we kind of preview this for about 10 minutes in our class um, if you're new to my channel every week we have a different story for comprehension and that's the sole purpose of that story so in morning meetings we read a different type of book because I read it with remote students and in-person students so for example this week we're reading the zoo day or day at the zoo I forget what it's called it's part of made for me literacy we read the story we go through those questions it's more just to like get them acclimated to the day talk about zoo animals again tying in with all the other animal things that everybody else is doing but when it comes to my actual reading time we usually take between 20 and 30 minutes just to talk about comprehension so this week our story is about fruit and I have three different levels the lower level and then there's a one pager with uh, symbol supports and then the page then a page just with the words. Every day we read the same story and each day we do a different thing for comprehension. Remember, I have first graders, second graders, and third graders. So even though they are on IEPs and we're doing like adapted work, they still need to understand these concepts. So we go through one day we talk about the main idea, the next day we talk about like WH questions, one day we talk about like key details and it's all based on their level so some levels are like um, images of the key details or images of the WH questions but we do those each day so this week we're doing fruit switching over to math what we're doing this week in math is measurement so like rulers and stuff some students are doing non-standard measurement for example like cubes like like unifix cubes so they're measuring with those um, some students are working on rulers just depends on the grade level and their academic levels some are working just on the vocabulary of the math let me see if i can find an example of this we're going through what it means length weight height um, that's for certain levels of students and then other ones are simply tracing for example they're like learning length and they're tracing that um, and then they'll either like as a whole group will like measure a few small objects then I'll break them up into their groups and they go and do like more group work type things. So for science um, we have been doing all week for the past like three weeks we've been talking about the human body and each kid traced to their body and they have it somewhere on the wall and every day we talk about a different thing so we talked about the skull we're really digging deep into bones because we talked about dairy last week so about calcium and strong bones and this week we're kind of finishing up bones so we talked about the bone structure we talked about why bones are important um we glued bones to our like little body shapes and so we glued the hand bone and the arm bone today um, and next week we're talking about muscles so we're trying to finish up bones this week they're they're stuck they're like kind of starting to get it it's a hard concept i think one thing i want to do is maybe like later this week i want to do a couple of projects where they like create a skeleton with like q-tips or something and then kind of understand how bones fit into each other we also did an activity where um it's just a simple piece of paper it was free i'll link it down below it was like the outside of the body versus the inside of the body and so kind of showing them that yes we have a body but inside has something different that you can't see for writing this week let me see if i can find one that's not filled in for writing this week i decided that we were just going to be doing writing journals so it is may so there are different pages in here like uh, you know, write a different letter, write your name in different ways, draw a person, or um, one of the options is like, draw your best friend, and then there are options for sentences. Some students I have can write sentences, some students I have can write letters or a basic word. It just kind of depends. There's a lot more that I want to show you, so I'm going to bring you over to another area. Sorry that the lighting is kind of weird over here, but I want to um, highlight a few things. So whenever I talk or I do like some sort of book, I really try to immerse the kids into all of the things about that book. It's not necessarily like a themed unit. It's just more that way they really grasp it. So for example, with the zoo, is that what we're doing? Yeah, with the zoo, well, I'm already forgetting. The zoo day, 
I also printed off these like tangram things for different animals. So it was like a fun activity that they could do after we read the book, just kind of like reinforcing it. Or um, after we read about the fruits, we sorted fruits and vegetables and then I had them draw their favorite fruits and just different things like that. And they're so simple, free, just different like free activities. I woke up so hungry and thirsty. I have a seltzer. I'm drinking it right now. I brought all these different kinds of fruits, like raspberries and a banana, an orange. I don't even know. I might save some of this for tomorrow in the fridge. My lunch. Uh, what are these? Peppers. Chicken salad. I already have a lunch, but I might also eat this. Uh, with the wrap what are these blondies like cookie bars and two bags of popcorn orange juice and another one so here's the book that I need um I'm actually going to order the board book the board book of it it'll get here in two days so I'm going to order that right now. That's great. That's like the first thing I've bought for next week. I try not to buy much. So $9 is okay because I'll keep it forever. Just have to, sorry, I'm backlit. I just have to add that sometimes other teachers do have the books that I need and I will borrow from them. Like I'm not always going to buy the book, but for this one, I feel like it would be worth buying because they had a board book version. If I were to ask around my school, they would probably only have the paperback version and it would get ruined in here the first day. So board books a lot of times are a bit safer. So I'm going to do that really quick. Um, if you are new to my channel, the old people are probably tired of hearing, but, um, but every day I do a different task related to planning. So today was the day that I just printed all the things. So I wrote out the lesson plans and printed all the things, but I'm not gonna copy them and set them up until tomorrow. But I wanna show you some of the plans that I have for next week and talk through my rationale, kind of like what I did earlier, but talk through exactly why I picked what I picked. I feel like I love watching planning videos, not because I'm like, type A or because I want to copy exactly like what they're planning, but I love to hear people's rationale about why they find what they find. For me, I don't have a curriculum. So for people who have like actual like teacher books and whatever, it's even easier because you just follow the next sequence and adapt from there. But there are so many things here that I just kind of had to come up with in my brain. I usually write a scope and sequence for the whole year and I follow that pretty strictly throughout the year. So when I'm referring back to things, I'm just looking back at that scope to kind of remind myself, okay, for the month of May, this is kind of what we're doing and here's how I want to go about it. So I did have a planning period and this was my to-do list on my sticky note. Oh my gosh, see, it's already out of focus. So a lot of things like schedule a meeting, review my scopes to print for my reading unit, my writing unit, my small group reading, uh, my math, specifically skip counting, and my life skills. So I wrote up my plans. I already have them. Um, I wrote up everything because I make copies of them and give them to my staff. So next week we're talking about vegetables. We're doing more money, we're doing journals, finishing our email unit. Oh, I forgot to show you. We're writing emails, practicing writing emails. Um, for our body, we're moving on to muscles and lungs. And for life skills, we're talking about our bedroom and how to clean up our bedroom. So that is all on this. If you want a more detailed planning video, I have one on my channel, so check it out. So let me talk about writing really quickly. I've gotten lazy, it's the end of the year. Every week now I've been making these writing journals. Let me see. So for one of my small groups, they are just using decodable books and we are almost done with our decodable book packet, which, not packet, I don't want to say that. I bought a bundle from Tara West because she's the love of my life. So we're at the letter N. Um, it's only consonants, so we only have maybe three and a half more weeks of school. Hopefully we'll be done. So Ned's net. So they're working on the letter N. They also do some N like phonics work, not with me, with a paraprofessional. They go through the vocabulary. And then really quickly, I made up some extra pages like this um, so they could practice writing the word um, to help them with that vocabulary and that phonics 
for life skills, we're talking about bedrooms. So mapping out a bedroom, which I think would be kind of fun for them, a little project, and then talking about, you know, what's important, the vocabulary of a lamp, a desk, and all those things. So one thing is, we're actually gonna make our own bedrooms. So there's like a bedroom map, and then there's all of these different pieces, which I'll make copies tomorrow, and they get to map out their bedroom and draw it out. I really wanted to do like a 3D model, like either a pop-up or use some boxes. Um, I might still do that next week, I haven't decided, but we'll, we'll figure it out. For our comprehension this week, we are talking about vegetables, and so I just printed this off. I haven't made the copies or anything, but the vegetable comprehension book and the vegetable like questions and WH questions at main topic. So that'll be set. I found this for free. I thought I would ask them at the beginning. Since we already talked about fruits this week, we made anchor charts about the difference between fruits and vegetables. I'm gonna leave those up because that'll help next week when we talk about vegetables. And then because they've been introduced to all this now, they'll get to like choose if they like fruits or vegetables and they get to write a sentence. This was just a freebie on Teachers Pay Teachers. I always search what I want, click free, go through all that first, and then I buy something. I forgot to show you my outfit. I decided to look a little bit more springy. I have like a lilac sweater on top and then like a dress. It's really a dress, but it kind of looks like a skirt. And yes, I am wearing shorts. And my seltzer too. So my pair has left and I gave them each like a project. They were willing to do it and I'm grateful. So one of them took a bunch of file folders and they're just cutting and gluing to put them on the like folder part of it. And then we're gonna laminate them another day. And then the other one took a bunch of centers. Now I think I've explained, I'm kind of like sharing my thought process out loud. I really want like more advanced centers and so I've not been wanting to pay for them. I've been trying to find them through free things or other things like that. So I have a subscription to Super Teacher Worksheets and I just realized the other day that they have all these like task cards that can kind of be like centers basically. I sent like maybe six or seven centers home with one of my paras. They're gonna laminate them and put them in. Hold on. I have a bunch of like envelopes like this kind of so they're going to put them in envelopes like that and laminate them so we'll be good to go but i actually found more after they left i'm kind of mad so for example like these task cards where you compare numbers so cool i already had i had no idea that my subscription had these things if you're not on super teacher worksheets it's 20 dollars a year and it just saves me in a pinch like i don't use it for the bulk of my teaching but it is so helpful when you just need one more activity, one more worksheet, one little craft that's lame. And so look at it. I think there's some free ones just to see, but it's been really helpful for me when I'm like low on ideas. Um, yeah, only it's only and it's only twenty dollars a year. So this one is like subtraction. They're getting higher levels, so I think some of them are going to be able to do this next year or the year after. And then beginning of multiplication but i like that sometimes one number is like missing um, and then it comes with like all these different options to do so it's like use it as a math center you know laminate them and dry erase play a scavenger hunt game do a challenge use it on the whiteboard use it for extra help like i love all the ideas so it's hard because like most of the time i stick to like the kindergarten versions of things because of my students and like where they're at but I thought it was kind of cool and one of the other things I've really been thinking of and little Miss Kim has this I might put a screenshot of her um, Instagram right here but basically like she lets her students make the labels like they draw their own labels they draw their own name tags especially like where they hang their backpack or something for the markers for this they have them do their own stuff and I've always been like hesitant because I like when things all look the same and clean but I'm loosening up in different ways so I also found this on Super Teachers where it has the whole alphabet, but you can have the students draw. So I think I'm going to have some students draw the different things for our alphabet, and then I'm going to laminate it and hang it up downstairs in my actual classroom. Um, this is just like my extra classroom. Uh, and so actually hang this up probably for next year, but I think that will look really good um, because it'll be like they made it and it'll kind of make it feel like they own some of the space and maybe I'll do that every year.
home. All right, wow, what a journey. So I left and I decided that I didn't want to cook tonight. My friend is coming over. We are watching Jersey Shore, trying to feel the vibes. So I decided it was time for tacos, but obviously am I a homemaker? Absolutely not, and I don't cook. So I ordered tacos. So I'm gonna plate them up to make it look official and then I'm gonna quickly make some margarita. Margaritas, not singular, plural, because I will not just have one and neither will my friend. On my way out of school, I was asked if I would be like on a committee or like help with something. And I've just realized that this school year, I overexerted myself way too much. Like I've done 85 gabillion different things. Oh my gosh, look at these tacos. They look so good. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's not a good piece. Mm. I feel like I overexerted myself. Sorry, I got distracted by the tacos. And I've just felt like not, it wasn't good. And so I've been reading up and like, thinking about like how to not do that it's been such a process i think because i like feel like when you're in high school and college you're like a little bit of like an overachiever because you want like a good grade and then when you start working you like want to do well at your job so again a little overachieverness i feel like most teachers are just overachievers by nature so it was really tempting for me but like i had to say no i had to say no and i'm so glad that i said no because I just, I don't have it. I don't have the time in my schedule. I don't have the time in my life. It's just not gonna work. So life is too dang short. Let me get my stuff. Let me show you my tacos. We each have four, so eight tacos. I have to say Mexican food this far north is not the best. My mom and my grandma make the best Mexican food because they are Mexican. But the place that I ordered from is about as close as I could get on like a northern side, you know, so it's pretty decent. But yeah, and I told my grandma that tacos here are like a couple bucks per taco and she almost like had a heart attack because y'all know if you're from California or if you're from like the Southwest that tacos are cheap food. But for some reason here, they're not. And these are simple tacos. This is how I know. Wow, we're going to get on our taco train right now. <sighs> As a Mexican-American and African-American, I have to say, most people do tacos wrong. And I think that's why a lot of people might not like Mexican food as much. Some people love it. Some people hate it. In Mexico, a taco is simple. It is the protein, maybe onion, maybe cilantro with the tortilla. If you get a quesadilla, it's not the big, large round flat thing it is like almost like a taco kind of but with a little cheese on it so a lot of people out here especially up north oh they're like making their tacos with like 85 toppings cheese all this other stuff it should be as authentic as possible so that's why i go to this place because it's pretty authentic so this is mine yes i have four tacos don't judge me i'm very hungry today as you all saw these are vegan carne asada weird this is al pastor because i like al pastor a lot so my friend's coming i have to quickly make this margarita mix and then we're gonna watch jersey shore i just got an email from my boss about my classroom for next year so i might actually do a little work tonight whoa i really try not to do work but i think it'll be like fun work so i'll show you all and like get your opinions on it because i need to order furniture i need to order classroom furniture so i'll explain more after Jersey Shore. All right, hello everyone. It is nighttime now. Let's see. It's 8:13. It's just getting dark. Um I watched a few episodes of Jersey Shore, changed my clothes, put my hair up, looking slightly a mess. Okay, lighting is better. We are ready. Let's talk. So, I'm very excited because I just got the final confirmation that I get to order furniture for my classroom next year. And before you're like, whoa, your school has all this crazy furniture? No. So I want to like backpedal and explain, hopefully explain why I get to order this furniture and remind you that it, this is nothing special. Um, 
I'm excited about it. I feel really like grateful that I get to do this, but it's more out of necessity and I tried to do it pretty like low budget. So if anybody's ever trying to order furniture, um, hopefully you'll find some that's pretty low budget. So here's the backstory. Last school year, when I did not have the classroom that I have now, um, I was still at my old job. The classroom that I was given, we'll call it classroom A, was a third grade classroom. So it had third grade furniture. It had a teacher desk, a horseshoe shaped like small group desk, and then 20 something student desks. It's a very small room. I don't know how they fit it, but they did power to them. It was a third grade classroom. When the school knew that they were going to have more self-contained rooms, they were going to hire another self-contained teacher, me. Um, they reconfigured the whole school. They decided that they would move the third grade classroom in classroom A to um, up to a different floor closer to the rest of the third grade and to a bigger classroom. So that would leave that smaller classroom, classroom A, for me, Miss Martin, and my self-contained room. So I get there in August, you know, end of August, getting ready for the school year, and my room has no furniture in it. It is like a blank slate. It has like two bookshelves, uh, a centipede, and that's it. I'm at, not in the basement. I'm on the first floor, but my school's kind of like on a hill. So I don't have many windows in my room, um, which is fine. I like my room a lot. I love classroom A. It just feels very cozy, perfect size for self-contained, no noise. My kids could be as loud as they want. It won't disrupt anyone. It's perfect. Um... So in August, that's when I found out. So then in August, I was also told that only special ed would be coming back into the building in person. This was August 2020. So everyone else was remote. And so we, um, because of that, and because I had no furniture, my school was like, hey, you know what? Chances are the rest of the people are not going to be back for a long time. Just let's find you furniture you can use for this school year since you don't have any furniture right now. Let's find furniture you can use and that way, you know, teach your kids and whatever and we'll figure it out when we get to it. So they actually just had no furniture for me because they, the school was like expanding so much, like they needed more classrooms, more space. They were using group desks for student tables, like they just needed more furniture. There's no furniture for me. <laughs> I think there's like one uh, old like 1950s teacher desk, which I wouldn't even use. So long story long. We go, we, we go into like the basement storage and I find uh, the tables that I have now. So like some of those horseshoe tables that I think were meant for the kindergarten first grade rooms. I stole those. I stole um, four or five like larger tables for my students to have like social distancing. And that was that. So I was planning on using classroom A, uh, but then right before school started, they decided to move me and the other self-contained rooms to larger classrooms that were empty just for the year because of social distancing. We didn't know yet that much about COVID. We needed more windows, air ventilation, all that kind of stuff. I took all of the stuff from classroom A, all of the furniture I'd stolen, brought it up to classroom B, which is what you've seen during this vlog. So all the shelves on the wall, they're not mine. All of the decor on the walls, also not mine. And someone else's room that had been perfectly set up, you know, decor wise, and I just pushed their stuff to the wall and brought my furniture in the middle. And that's what we've been using this year. So um, it's not ideal, but it's actually so good for COVID before we knew all of the transmission stuff, all of those things. So getting back to my original story now, it's the end of the school year. It's looking like school's gonna start going back to normal. And yet we finally realized, like I finally remembered in like, you know, maybe beginning of May, I was like, wait a second, none of this furniture's mine. Like I need to give it back if all these classrooms are opening back up in you know, August, September, I need to give all this furniture back. So emailed my boss, emailed all these people. And I was like, I just wanna check like, is there any extra furniture? Uh, because if not, I have nothing and I'm gonna need some furniture. So we went through, we went through the basement again, figured out that I think, I think there was like a bookshelf and some other stuff. They also were adding on another, I think it's like, 
think they're also adding on another fourth grade room, another fifth grade room. So it was just too thin. So they basically emailed me the other day saying, you know what, Braylon, you, we actually don't have any furniture for you because your students have different needs and we don't want to cherry pick from other rooms because that means the furniture might be too big for your students or too small. Um, so we will add a little line in the budget for you to get furniture. So I'm very grateful. So in August, September, I'm going to have brand new furniture to use. It's not fancy. It's not like anything, um, extra modern or special it's just very basic furniture but I'm excited because they did get let me kind of choose some of the products that I would want and I already have a lot um I have you know all my shelves and you'll if you want to see more about my actual classrooms uh, I'll link some of those down below um but I have a lot of stuff but it's cool to get more so I want to show you the things that I actually did you know purchase or request to purchase and I'm just excited about it I think it's just gonna be I don't know I think it's gonna be like fun okay I hope you can see this I hope this is making sense so I needed like eight or ten of these chairs <laughs> like literally simple chairs so I think the one I bought is like a pack of six so not the individual one but I bought like a pack of six and it was such a struggle, I had to call the OT to check, like, the chair height. Little did I know, chairs come in different heights. Like, who would have thought? So I got, I think, 10 chairs. Then I needed these, which these are, like, so important to my classroom, right? Um, the horseshoe table. So I ordered three of them. I'm really pumped because I ordered just, like, plain black legs. I think I ordered, what was it? I ordered black chairs and then I ordered these with black legs. Um, what else? I had to order actual student desks. Like, so funny. I forgot all the things that a classroom would need. So I ordered student desks. I needed six. I think I ordered six of them. And then I actually requested a, um, a neutral rug. And then, what did I get? Ooh, I got these floor cushions, too. Because we won't really have enough space to, like, have a full-time rug. But I thought these would be good if we ever wanted to just sit on the rug for, like, a lesson. Um, and this isn't the same one. I think the one I found was, like, $150. I can't find it. But I I think I got, like, six, six or nine shelf with the bins. With the clear bins. So... I'm, I'm sharing all this because it was very exciting, but also it was really helpful for me to kind of, you know, get a little bit more storage and realize that I'll get to start my classroom off on like the right foot, I guess. Um, again, not trying to like flex. My school is definitely not looking to spend a bunch of money, but I was really grateful that um, that I remembered and that they remembered that, oh my gosh, wait, Braylon has no furniture. So um more stuff to come on what my classroom's actually gonna look like um i'm planning on keeping the out like the outline kind of the same so it's gonna be a packed room uh but it'll be okay a lot of the special ed rooms that i've seen at my school have little mini closets or they have a space or even just like built-in storage i just don't have any of that so i kind of have to get creative with my storage but last year when i set it up before we moved to classroom b I really liked how it was, so I'm going to try my hardest to keep it exactly the same. So that's kind of the plan, and yeah, I'm really excited for my furniture. It's the end of the night. I'm really tired. I definitely want to go to sleep pretty soon, um, but I'm excited. I got to show you all the whole vlog, the whole day, like morning to night. Um, I think, you know, usually in the evening I will watch TV and kind of unwind, I already watched my TV, so I think I'm going to get myself like a nice glass of water, sit in my bed. I usually listen to like a YouTube video or a podcast or something and kind of doze off to sleep. But I do have work tomorrow, so I can't stay up too late. More recently, I feel like I've been going to sleep around 9, 9.15 or at least like being like at least by 9.15, I'm in my bed, like face moisturized you know, ready to go. But um, that's just because, as you saw, I wake up super early in the morning. And more recently, I've been feeling like I need more sleep than I'm getting. And 
I don't know, the days are long, the days are a bit draining, and I just want to, I don't know, I just want to like feel well rested. And also because it's like the end of the year, I just want to enjoy some of it and like have fun. Um, but anyway, you all are awesome. I feel like when I vlog and I talk with you all, I feel like I'm talking to my friends, weirdly enough. Uh, I feel like I'm just kind of sharing my very public life with you. Um, obviously never sharing student information or student names or anything like that. But I love sharing my my day or my week. Um, it helps me reflect on it and I learn so much from it. So you all are amazing and I'm excited for all that is to come. All right, I'm going to end the vlog before I keep rambling and talking about nonsense. Um, but yeah, you guys are the best, and I will see you in the next video.